Ever since the Valve Dev Conference aired, there's been one term that's been thrown around. The Immutable OS. What is an Immutable OS? How does it affect being able to modify your system and other third-party programs? Why is it so disliked among the Linux faithful? And will it make playing third-party games on Steam Deck impossible? Ever since Valve posted the Steam Deck development live stream sometime in mid-November, there's been one term that's been thrown around constantly that a lot of people don't seem to understand. It's the term Immutable OS. What does it mean? We'll get to that later, but it is confirmed that Steam OS is an Immutable OS. Around the 3 hour 1 minute mark of the live stream itself, which you can find on YouTube, well, the question was posed here. Okay. Will Steam OS have a read-only immutable OS file system? Uh, yes. So by default, uh, the updates, the OS updates, will be distributed as a as a whole OS image. Uh, but you can enter a developer mode, which will let you modify the file system and install packages like a normal distribution. An immutable OS essentially is making the root partition of the Steam of the Steam OS, or in this case, any immutable Linux OS for that matter a read-only partition, meaning any regular user cannot go in and make modifications even with the proper admin passwords, etc, etc. It's meant to be more secure. It's meant to prevent users from erroneously destroying their own operating systems as they see fit. It's more so for normal people that don't really use their computers to tinker around with, nor do they like doing things like installing or whatever. They like using their computer for one thing, work. I suppose the most controversial part about this has more so to do with the fact that Linux, is an, its the entire philosophy is free and openness. It's free as in freedom of speech, as well as free as in zero dollars. But here's the thing though, you're also free to do basically whatever you want with it because it's your OS. And various developers of various, well, distros, as they would call it, they give you the keys to do whatever you want to it, including destroying the entire operating system, if you so choose. And maybe it will install and launch now. What is the point of having a, oh. Um, hello? Did my computer just hard reset? <laughs> what? I mean, to be clear, I've seen some broken Windows behavior on first install, but this is... Um, shoot, he's dead, Jim. Did I manage to completely nuke my desktop environment? Like, my GUI? How? Just logged in, and this is what I got. Ubuntu comes with absolutely no warranty. I can Now why on earth would you want to do that? Well, that's because Linux users love doing stuff like that all the time. So an immutable OS would be basically the antithesis of doing so. An immutable OS, in many ways, is actually more restricted on what you can modify than, say, Windows. But the immutable OS also isn't meant for the tinker. It's meant for the kind of person that likes singular tasks. Actually, the best example of this would probably be Android. Android, without the ability to root it, is basically immutable. You basically cannot go into the root file system and do anything with it, which is why a lot of Linux users don't like to call Android Linux. Just, just for that one reason, you know? So you are free 
to boot this in dev mode, however, according to PA Lugrify, essentially you're able to boot into dev mode and then you can make modifications to the root partition if you so desire. Now you might be asking what use is this for a regular user? Well I'll tell you. You know how you have to use command line for a lot of things in Linux as of right now? Yeah, you'll you'll want dev mode on to install things from your package manager, say like Pac-Man or some crap like that. SteamOS. It's based on Arch Linux. There are ways to install applications without resorting to using, well, dev mode. In case you're not, you know, comfortable with taking you around in a unlocked mode, so to speak. So there is something called a flat pack in which your programs in flat packs run in what they call a container. It's not quite a VM, but it's very similar in concept. Essentially, it's a sandbox of sorts. There's also something called an app image in which you can just download it and then run it. It's it's like a portable it's like a portable app that you like you would download for Windows, and then you don't have to install it. It's pretty cool, huh? So how will this affect prior tutorials that I've put out? Well, it's quite simple, really. You just have to boot into dev mode. Then, well. If it's significantly different, I'll make a new video. Trust me on that. But if it's not significantly different, then you'll just have to put in the dev mode and then hopefully follow the same procedures. As for adding the non-Steam games into your Steam library, it is also said in this same dev stream that Valve will be making it easier to do than ever before. And knowing how clunky that interface is, it's a godsend because good lord, I hate that interface so much, so, so much, you would not believe it. It's terrible on every operating system Steam is on. So the question then becomes, when the time comes for non-Steam developers to create Steam Deck optimized programs, how will they package that? What do you think they'll do? The hope is that they'll use app images or, you know, flat packs. And the hope is that Valve will provide a graphical flat pack manager of some sort. Like, you know, an app store, if you will, right? So the hope is that Valve does that and that you can just get whatever flat packs you want off the internet and just run things that way. Also, as for Lutris, Lutris is quite literally, okay, not literally, but basically a requirement for Linux gaming because it makes things so much easier. Like you would not believe. I'm not going to go through the effort of setting up a real Linux like gaming system without Lutris because Linux gaming without Lutris or Steam is miserable. Believe me, I know. So the hope is that Lutris will come out with a flat pack with all the dependencies needed. Cause so here's the thing. Everything else works fine without the dependencies, it seems. But Origin requires stupid dependencies that you can only install with the command line. And you need admin perms to do so. So, you know. It's kind of stupid. So the hope is that Lutris comes prepackaged with those, or maybe Valve will have them pre-installed. But, you know, Lutris Flatpak or App Image? That's what I hope for. Otherwise, you'll have to log on to dev mode for everything, and that's going to be really annoying. And so, just take that into consideration, devs, please. I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye. Also, you might be wondering, why am I a VTuber? Oh yeah, I know you've been wondering this since this video started. Hell, I'm willing to bet most of you aren't even watching up to this point. And if you're not, I'll put out a separate video later. But I mostly did this as a test to see if I could do it. Because science isn't concerned with whether or not we should do it, but rather if we can. And I just so happen to prove that I can. <laughs>